Hello, this is John from Brevin for Interior Designers. We have a new challenge this week. I've been asked to demonstrate how to build a elliptical domed ceiling with a tunnel access, sort of a barrel vault. So we'll get into that and I'll show you some advanced features in Revit that'll make it happen. Okay, let's take a look. A quick tutorial on how to build the following. This is a bit of an igloo shape. It's a, it's a dome that's been uh, washed in the vertical dimension. And it has a, a tunnel, half round dome a, a, attached to it. And if we happen to look inside, you'll see that they're connected together. And there's the interior of the dome. So here's the Revit project file. And let me show you how this was done. So I will start a brand new file. I'll use the architecture template. And here's an empty space. So first you need some, some guidelines, uh, some method of, of determining where the center of the dome is. So what we're gonna use is masking in sight. We're gonna use an in-place model, the 3D model in Revit that can be skinned with materials. For example, you can build a shape and then apply a wall to it, for example, or a roof or a ceiling, and not necessarily a ceiling, but a roof wall or floor to that object. So, so we'll begin with, uh, with an in-place mass here. I'll choose that option, close. I'll give it a name, I'll accept, accept it. And first, again, you need some guidelines. So I'll go here to the reference planes and I'll simply draw a reference plane to the center of where the dome would be. And I will click on this reference plane, double click on the name and, and call it perhaps uh, east-west plane or something. I will then draw another one here vertically to know where the center of the dome is. And then I'll draw some additional reference planes to, to illustrate where the, uh, where the radius of the dome is, is supposed to be. So I'll go reference plane, pick lines, and I will locate it maybe 10 feet away from the center line. There, so that's 10 feet. I'll even do the other side. So that's the center. These are planes to the left and the right. Okay, so this is again uh, a plan view. I'll even go ahead and do a reference plane as an example, and I'll I'll put it here, 10 feet from center. So when I draw a circle, it'll confirm that it's perfectly circular. Um, and what I'll do here is in my elevation view, the south elevation. This one here. I will draw the shape of my dome. Now, I like to set up a reference plane that tells me where the height of the dome is. So let's say we go half. This the radius here is 10 feet. I'll make it half of that. I'll make it five feet. So it's just squashed. So what I'll do is go reference plane, pick points, and I'll make it, let's say, five feet away. I'll pick that point there. So I then need to draw a cross section of what that dome looks like as if it were solid, a big solid mass. So first, what I'll do is, obviously circle will build a perfect dome. If I use circle, it asks me to pick a plane. And again, we're gonna use the center line that we drew earlier, which is called east-west plane. And if I did that and hit okay, this draws it perfectly on that center line. We're gonna go to 3D. Now that circle is situated right here on my center line here called east-west plane. But in this case, we don't want a perfect dome, so I'm gonna delete this. I'll draw an ellipse. So in this case, 
I will do it again. I'll use ellipse this time. Pick the center. The, the plane has already been set up, but if it ever gets lost, you simply go back to set and you tell it here to make sure you draw it on the east-west plane. So it acts like a piece of glass that you're drawing on, a vertical surface, invisible, and you're drafting on top of it. That way you can locate where that drawing is in 3D space. It's already set, so we're going to accept that. So I go to ellipse. This is the center of the ellipse. This is the width of the ellipse. And again, I use this vertical line here that's five feet away from the bottom here. And I click on it, and there's my shape. And what I need is a quadrant, which is going to be spun in a circle, which is usually called the revolve tool. But we're in a uh, massing environment, and there is no revolve tool here. So what I need to do is draft what this quadrant right here looks like. So I'll use the line tool, and I'll simply click on the ground, draw a line horizontally. I'll click on the vertical line here, draw it vertically, and then do some trimming so I'm left with a quadrant right here. That, that needs to be drafted. So I will use split line. I will cut this oval. Therefore, I can then use TR for, tr for trim, TR, there, and select this part of the oval and this horizontal line. And it cleans up that corner and then choose this arc and this vertical line, keeping this leg here, not that one, cuts off that line. And then again, this vertical line and this bottom leg here, click and click, and there's the shape that you're after. It escaped, otherwise the trim tool remains active, it escaped once. And there's the shape that is drawn right there. Problem is, if you simply take this shape in Revit and use the create form command under massing, you'll get the, uh, uh, an incorrect 3D model. So if you go to 3D, you know, there's your shape. If you click on that shape you've drawn, that profile, and you go to create a form, it will build an extrusion. So that's not what I want. I want to take that and revolve it or spin it in a circle along its center line here to create more of a dome shape. I'm going to control Z to undo that. Control Z again. Go back to the south elevation. What's missing here? is some way of defining what the vertical axis is that acts as a center point that will spin this shape around in a circle to build uh, your, your dome. So I'll go to line command. I'll simply take this vertical line here, which is considered the center. I'll just click on it and draw a perfectly vertical line beyond the shape of this profile. So it's vertical there. And you go to 3D, you'll see just a simple vertical line. And I have that line plus my profile here. Select them both. Then, if you go to create form, it'll treat this vertical line, which is not a profile, it's simply a, a vertical line, as an axis of rotation. It'll take this profile and spin it around in a circle along that axis, so that center line. So when they're both selected, you create a form, and Revit knows to build that dome. It comes in two halves, but you can ignore that for now. Now let's say I want to build a tunnel that accesses that dome. So let's go back to the south elevation. I need to draw a little tunnel here. And let's, let's say in this case, we're going to make it a perfect circle. So in this case, I will go to circle and I'll build it here in a center line. Some of you want it in the center. And here's my radius. And while you see those numbers changing, you can type a number. For example, I can type, I can type four and enter and it makes it exactly four foot radius. Otherwise have some reference planes to denote what the size you want. Uh, this is drawing it in the center of the object here. So back in my south elevation, it disappears because this is a solid form. So to see my shape, I need to change the display graphics here to wireframe. Everything's transparent. I need to make this form perfect again, a perfect profile that has a semicircle and a line across the bottom, just like I did with this dome here. So again, you got to be careful not to select this object. You do this work. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line and then trim the circle using that horizontal line. So I'll draw another line and I'll draw it across the ground here. You see, I've made it longer right there. Now we'll slice this circle. So I will go slice here, or rather, split rather. Like that, escape, and then do a trim right here or TR. TR. Keep this and keep this horizontal line. And if you don't see it, hit tab until you find it. And it cuts that line, trims it out. Then trim this with that horizontal line there. Again, you, you're keeping what you're selecting. This gets erased beyond the intersection. This is kept, this is kept. That gets erased. 
And then confirm that you've got the right shape. So when you put your mouse here, it should show the entire per profile and it's gotta be perfect. When you go to 3D, you can again confirm there's the object. And you can here in 3D ideally, create a solid form. Pull it out, the distance that you'd like to have for the tunnel. Again, you could draw a reference plane here and align this with the reference plane, for example, to get the exact distance that you're after. You'd have done that in advance, but I'm just making this up as I go. Otherwise, have a reference plane like this down here to act as the entrance cutoff point. But there's my objects. And the last thing you want to do is combine these two objects together. So you go to join here. You select this 3D model. You select this 3D model and they've been joined. This mass is done, hit OK. So there you've got a 3D mass, a shell, not really a shell, it's more of a solid because they're, they're, the entire model through and through is completely solid, uh, it has no skin or out, outside area. It's as if it's carved out of ice. This is the model you're after, this is the object you want. Next, you go back to masking the site, and now you can apply one of these three objects to this model to create either a roof, a wall, or a floor. So for a, uh, a roof, uh, personally, you can go either way, roof or wall, but I'd rather treat it as a door, uh, as a wall, because then certain commands, uh, like windows and doors, work on walls. So if later I want to add a, a door to it, it'll treat the surface as a wall and follow the wall uh, Command. So let's go into the wall tool. Choose a wall type. In this case, I'll choose something like a, let's see here, brick on metal stud. And then here you got to decide when you select a 3D model, what will it represent? What will that surface represent? That surface will represent the interior face of the wall, in my case, because I want it to grow from here out. So I'm touching the interior. The exterior grows out from that point. And I will select this object, select that object, select that object. And there is your 3D model. The solid is still here. It's right there. And when you select a solid, you can go back to edit in place and you can try to manipulate that object simply double, double clicking on uh, these surfaces, sometimes accesses some tools that you can manipulate. Um, in this case, there's other tools here that allow you to manipulate that form, but we're gonna leave it alone. And in my case, given that I built this correctly from the get-go, we're gonna do simply just click on it and delete. We don't need that solid object. And there is your model. Now there's two halves to the walls. And you can clean that up here under modify join is here and click on this wall and then this wall and they join and lose the gap between them and there is your 3d model so i will then add a little shadow to this and there you go that's it for today